All right. So it's time for the final uh, presentation in this session. Uh, so with us is uh, Peter Patrick from uh, Lutra Consulting, and he's going to talk about meshes and their efforts to make mesh uh, full citizen next to raster and vector data in, uh, in geospatial applications. So welcome to my presentation. Thank you for coming. Um, I will try to explain you about this uh, new stuff that's coming to QGIS, and uh, it's already there. You can use it. Uh, in this conference, we, talk, we talked and heard a lot about uh, open data, Copernicus data, weather data, flood modeling, and uh, until recently, it was kind of difficult to, to display them in QGIS, but right now, the mesh data, weather data, flood data are first-class citizen, and uh, I will tell you more about it. Okay, a bit about me, I'm Lutra Consulting, uh, and uh, I'm QGIS core committer, and uh, I'm mainly responsible for this new mesh layer, and support for weather and flood data in QGIS, and I also did a macOS packaging project and some of the QGIS 3D, and uh, some uh, application development for iOS and Android for, with uh, QGIS rendering engine. Um, okay, what we will talk about? We will talk some differences between raster, vector, and mesh, and point clouds, then the structure of the data, then uh, about the new library, MDAL, that uh, is kind of input output abstraction library for, for your data. And then uh, what's implemented, some, uh, some existing examples, and then what's, what are the development plans and confirm, confirm plans for your next release of QGIS. Okay, so let's start. So first, this is not about point clouds. Uh, there is a lot of confusion in terminology. Uh, this is not about point clouds, this is more about weather data and flood modeling. Uh, the difference is that uh, pretty much we expect uh, less data, a lot of less data. We expect that uh, you have similar mesh than in point clouds, but your mesh is small enough that can be loaded in the memory. But on the contrary, you, on every cell or every point of your data, you have many, many points. So for example, you have temperature every few hours for, I don't know, a week or month, but you don't have so much cells. So that's the difference. Uh, so let's talk a, a bit about What's the difference between this mesh layer and the raster and the, and the vector layers? Uh, everyone knows a vector layer. If you have a few features, you have attributes. Uh, for a raster layer, it's long enough here, so it's, uh, you can imagine it's a pixels. You have some uh, bands there with some data in the bands, some metadata. You have some scalar values assigned to these to this pixels or cells. But on the contrary, the, the mesh is irregular cell or grid. You can have a different, different uh, cells, different shape, different size all over the, 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 your area. So it, this is not regular. You can have various, type, various types. You can triangles, quads, or whatever polygons. You can have uh, assign the scalar data similar to the raster, but also you can have uh, so uh, vector data, and there's another confusion in terminology. I don't mean like vector data, like vector layer, but I mean the arrows like x, y, and like wind speed, and so on. Uh, and you have a topology here. So similar to the vector layers, your, you have some cells that are somehow connected in some domains. Okay, uh, how it comes to uh, the existing ecosystem of, of the libraries we have. So OGR is you have for vector layers in QGIS mainly or PostGIS. GDAL you have for raster layers. So we created a new library, it's MIT based, that is responsible, similar to GDAL or OGR, to handle your data to whatever solver you have, numerical, flood, weather, 
uh, and get it to the same structure that is easily recognized by QGIS or other software that will use the MDAL library. And you can then, similar to GDAL, work with the API, see API, and load your data and uh, uh, regardless of the format. Uh, for meshes, there are also a few data standards. Uh, you have the climate and forecast metadata conventions, uh, widely adapted for weather data mainly. And uh, there is an extension for uh, flood modeling mostly called UGRID, uh, unstructured grid, uh, that adds a topology to, the, to this uh, climate and forecast metadata convention, uh, which means that uh, for points, you can connect the points to some faces, to some cells. So uh, the MDAL library already supports both conventions almost fully, um, and we will try our best to uh, improve the, uh, like follow the, the standards and even improve um, support. Uh, let's talk a bit about um, uh, how the data are stored. So. Uh, as I mentioned, you have a mesh that consists of points, vertices, that are topologically connected to cells. Uh, it could be any shape, pretty much. It could be triangular, it could be mixed with some any polygons, or it could be a regular grid. You can have adaptive meshes, which means that, for example, for flood modeling, you want to have a, a more fine uh, mesh near your river or uh, area of interest, but you don't want that uh, computation cells uh, far from your from your point of interest. Yeah. And here is a real real world example from QGIS uh, with the uh, um, output of some numerical software for uh, you see the adaptive mesh and styling, so you can style the mesh and see your data. So this is for QGIS, I think, 3.4. Um, OK. Um, what's upcoming in the new QGIS releases this year, like 3.12 mainly? Uh, we would like to support, uh, so right now you have the standard 2D meshes, but we would like to support 1D meshes. Uh, so for example, when you want to uh, sewer system or just a reverse as a 1D. And then this 3D layered mesh. Uh, so for example, you have a, again river and you want to have a different levels. Uh, the UGRID convention supports this. And the uh, fully 3D meshes, that's not on the plan yet, but uh, hopefully we can get to that uh, in later point. So for MDAL and QGIS for the 3.12 release, we already have a plan to implement those 1D and 3D layered meshes. Um, layered mesh means that uh, you have a 2D mesh, but you have just did uh, copy pasted on different heights, pretty much. Uh, for now, uh, there is some prototyping done for meshes in QGIS 3D. So should I run? <laughs> okay, so um, so uh, right now you can visualize your your uh, your topology, mesh topology, in 3D, QGIS 3D. Uh, what's coming hopefully next year, next calendar year, is that you will be able to visualize also your data. So you can make those nice animations of floods or, or all other weather data you have in 3D. Right now, you can just visualize the mesh itself. Um, OK, how the data are stored? So you pretty much index your vertices or faces. And then you, for each vertic vertex or face, you assign for various times some data either scalar data or vector data like wind, wind speed. This, the data can be, can be then displayed 
uh, interpolated on your grid or as arrows if it is a vector data. So here is again the example from uh, QGIS 3.4 where you see uh, some meteorological data uh, and displaying wind speed as arrows and temperature. I oh know temperatures, but you, you see that there is a time slider, so you can you can uh, do some visualization or see the data in different times. And this is pretty much without any plugin. So you can directly, similar to the raster layer or vector layer, you can download data from, for example, Copernicus website and open it as a, as a mesh layer directly in QGIS. Uh, where here is the MDAL? Uh, MDAL was started uh, as an MIT library, so it can be used in different projects too, not just in QGIS. Uh, it's uh, really the wrapper around your data, so it doesn't have any algorithms or pre-processing of the data. Uh, it's C++ without any much dependencies like Qt or Boost. Uh, it has C API, so if you want to do some extension for different languages, contributions are welcome. So far it's shipped with QGIS, but we want to package it separately for future releases. and. Uh, uh, we also discussing the, uh, the opportunity to move it on the OSGEO incubator project, so hopefully we can make this happen upcoming months too. Uh, the library itself is based on Crayfish implementation, which came out in 2012, so it's not a uh, new library or new code, but the, it was separated uh, with transition to QGIS 3 in 2018. <coughs> It supports uh, various formats, 2DM, NetCDF, GRIP format, for the, and then uh, a lot of formats, uh, various numerical packages. Uh, you can find your package if you are in the flood modeling or weather. Uh, as I mentioned, we expect or we benchmark the library uh, typically to 10 gigabyte models maximum to a few millions of cells and a few hundred of time cells for each. Uh, various formats support lazy loading, so the loading in QGIS is very fast, and uh, data is uh, taken on demand. Um, as I mentioned, MDAL is for data input and output. QGIS is responsible for data interpolation rendering, which is, uh, so all the data from MDAL is uh, triangulated. Uh, and then the triangles are, are rendered. There is an identify tool, styling, calculator similar to the raster calculator. And there is still a Crayfish plugin in C++ and Python where you can do some plots or export animations and it's most uh, incubator for, for uh, upcoming features in QGIS. Uh, here is a screenshot from uh, QGIS and Crayfish for some plots on these lines. Okay, some, some examples. Okay, here is a wind speed um, from open data again, Copernicus. And this uh, trace animation is a feature that was uh, that's coming in uh, next QGIS release 3.12. The, your data can be styled similarly to vector layers or raster layers. Also, now you can, if you have some custom format, you can write a, a driver in MDAL. Or if you uh, want to, you have want to write some Python plugin. All this is uh, in a QGIS public API, so you can you can write your own plugin and do various stuff with with the mesh mesh data. Another example with uh, some scalar data for pollution, so you can produce these animations with uh, crayfish.
And again, you can, you can style it as you are used for a raster data. So nothing new there in styling. So if you are a QGIS user, it should be quite straightforward for you to, to just directly grab the data and use it. Some examples from QGIS from flood modeling. Again, we see an adaptive mesh with different sizes of uh, triangles here for depends on the distance from a, from a river and then some animations produced by QGIS. Okay, let me talk a bit about uh, upcoming development that is confirmed. Uh, we want to do this uh, trace animation. So on the canvas, you will be able to select the box and, and uh, the canvas will be refreshed in this way. We want to extend the mesh calculator for cell-centered data sets. Uh, we have a project for uh, highly improving uh, speed rendering of, uh, of your mesh data by similar technique than you have for uh, raster overviews or pyramids. So, because right now, uh, the triangular mesh that is generated is not based on your zoom level, but with this, it will, the number of triangles will be dependent on your zoom level, so it will be way faster than it is now. There are some small enhancements like export data to contours, uh, and, and a huge one support for 1D and 3D meshes as I described in the previous slides. So, uh, for MDAO, um, it goes hand by hand uh, with QGIS, so support for 1D meshes. We'll also add a support for meshes that contains uh, more than one domain. Uh, so, you can have um, multiple domains in, in one file, so you will be able to load them. Uh, support for 3D meshes. And we want to work on various formats for at a more lazy loading for various formats and improve the error handling. So it will show you show you why your file is not loaded. And we and if there is a time, we want to work on the packaging so you can use it also outside the QGIS and you don't need to compile it yourself. Okay, um, so that's. That's all I have prepared. Feel free to write me an email if you have some questions about some formats you want to support in MDAO, or f uh, fetch it on uh, GitHub, it's all in GitHub. Feel free to look at it, or sign to our Twitter account for news about, about upcoming development here. Thank you very much for your attention, and Any questions? Hi, thanks for the talk. It's a short question, actually. Is it possible to store um, so mesh data formats inside a geo package? Yeah, yeah, I think it's possible, but then uh, it must follow some specifications so we can implement it as a new driver in MDAL. The, the structure of the drivers in MDAL is similar to the GDAL, so like you have some basic structure where you want to fill the data and if you have for example these ugrid conventions there is all standard so you can like know like what's where how you can get like, my top topology my data but if you have your own format and it's spread enough or then it's, it could be added to the drivers as a new driver and could be loaded directly that's uh, no, no. Right now, um, as I mentioned, uh, most popular format is HDF5 first because usually the mesh is small, but you have like many many time steps for each cell, which means that you want to use some kind of HDF5. So that's most popular format, I think, in this area. But technically, it's possible. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. 
as I understand, uh, the functionality is available just via Crayfish plugin. So it is not in uh, QGIS core? No. Um, uh, cr you can use everything without the Crayfish plugin. All you've seen is just pure cr QGIS. So you install QGIS 3.6 or 3.8, 3.4. You can just load your climatic weather data and style it, show it without any plugin. Uh, Crayfish is uh, just a Python extension to create the animation or see the plots or some processing uh, integration. But everything is in a, like all the rendering, all the styling, everything is in uh, QGIS core or MDAL, if you are talking there, about that. Uh, there term. is coming like another question to my mind. Uh, what's the adaptation or, or, or connection to QG server? Because uh, there are those trail animation, for example, or a time dimension. Uh, yeah. uh, is it uh, right integrated? now, you should be able to probably just see your data in the QG server natively, because it's just a new layer, so it's there. Including those animations? That uh, moving. But for animations, uh, we would probably need to integrate it uh, in some, with some uh, yeah, that's not there. But uh, um, you can render the data because it's using the QGIS core renderer. So it should be there, but it's the time support is not there. Or Imagine if you want to publish your mesh data, a grip or net CDF, if you were to do it with GeoServer, you need to go through GDAL, but with this one you can directly use QGIS server to render it and directly render the native mesh without the conversion. And then if you want to animate, you need to have some front-end JavaScript library to be able to uh, fetch the WMST component to be able to uh, uh, browse through time. Any other questions? Still have time for maybe one question. Maybe I have one. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning that these meshes, they are usually not that large themselves, but they may have many time steps or... Mm -hmm. So, so you, uh, you make the assumption that the mesh definition itself always fits into memory? Um, it's not hard-coded in the library. Uh, the library is, the API is written in a way that it allows you to fetch the data by some time uh, spatial domain. Yeah. Uh, but all current drivers implementation is that it fits to the memory, but uh, okay. the drivers could be rewritten to, but yeah. yeah, but the data is lazy loaded mostly. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. so, so, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.